Can someone please help me? Can I dial a lifeline? What is up guys? Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. So today, as you can see in the title, we are going to be playing with the new RMS holiday release, the Hidden Desire Palette. I don't have any eye makeup on. I feel like that's blatantly obvious. <laughs> but this release, I feel like, you know, RMS is not one of those brands that just kind of jumps on the maximalism of the holidays as much as some other brands. And so this is a very succinct, uh, kind of curated release. These are six eyeshadows, a blush, and a highlighter. We're going to put them all on my face today. This is not a first impression. I have had the chance to kind of accumulate some thoughts on them, and I'm going to put primer on one eye, no primer on the other, so that you guys can see how it performs in both conditions. We'll talk about the price on this. We'll talk about the claims, if there are any, RMS brand overall, and then I will give you guys my final thoughts. Um, if you do end up enjoying this, at any point, feel free to give it a like. It helps other people find my channel, but it also helps me know that you want more videos like this one. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. I've actually had this for a while. I've been trying to get my thoughts together on it because I don't know, a few things hit me just from a first impression standpoint, right? So let's talk about the, the temperature values here. These three shades are all warm. These three shades are all cool. And then you have a blush and a highlight. And let's actually go ahead and swatch all these so we can talk about them in a little bit more practical terms. Hi, my name is Kaki. I do the best swatches. Welcome to my channel. So this is Guilty Immortal Lady Vanish, True Love, Mind Control, Secret Admirer. Those are the eyeshadows. And then we have the Mystic Moment Luminizing Powder and the Passion Play Pressed Blush. I have a little bit of blush on, but you guys know that, well, one of the mottos of my channel is that we can always put on more blush. So I am going to start by putting this blush on real quick. So like I said, this is called Passion Play and she's like very coral. And I, I like want to think that these are all a story that goes together. I think that that's what kind of held me back when I was first getting acquainted with this palette was I was trying to figure out what story they were trying to tell. They say you can kind of lighten this blush up by mixing it with the luminizing powder like that. But you see pretty quickly that luminizing powder is silvery, like mm, pearly silvery. It's very graying on the skin. Do you see that? I'm pretty warm complected, but definitely not the warmest. And for this being their only release of the holiday season, I get it, makeup minimalism, fine. I just don't think that that is like <laughs> the most universally flattering shade. I don't necessarily think it's doing me any favors. All right, I'm gonna dip into, even though we just kind of mixed them together, I'm gonna dip into the highlight. And I went on their website and I kind of wanted to see what they suggested doing with these shades. And they basically said that they encourage you to mix them together. I feel like that's kind of an afterthought. If you're gonna put six shadows in a palette, don't tell me that in order to achieve optimal results, I need to mix to match the color values that I want to achieve. Give me something that's a look, you know? It's supposed to be edited, and this is not actually, to my eye, like immediately, intuitively edited. I also feel like Beauty Counter's guilty of this too. I don't know, there are actually a few palettes out there like this where they're almost afraid to just make an everyday palette, and so they just throw blue in there. It makes me crazy. Call me a cynic, but I think it's kind of a gimmick. Like, I feel like it's a way to, hmm, for someone who is not really up to date, on trends in makeup for them to be like, let's do something trendy, people like blue. You know, it, I don't think that there's necessarily like a practical reason for that blue shadow to be in there. I would much rather that they had put a like a creamy white or a matte uh, cool brown because there is nothing like that in there. These are satins. In fact, I think they're all satins. Are they all satins? They're all either luminous or satin finishes. There are, are no mattes in here. I don't 
don't know, this tan color right here seems pretty matte. Let's start with that. So these are the new Wayne Goss brushes that I just got. I actually really love them. The only one I don't really like is the foundation brush. I just don't really think it makes sense. I don't think that the size of it makes sense and it picks up my dry skin in a way that I don't really love. My God, that's cool tone. Oh my gosh, do you see that? It looks like a really pretty beige and it goes on the skin, or my skin at least, kind of gray. Okay, I don't, uh, I don't like this shade. I like it even less than I remembered liking it. And for the satin uh, value of it, the satin texture of it, I'm really not getting a lot of like ease of spreadability. I'm gonna go in with this like cool toned rosy color right here and see if that gives me something a little bit better. I do feel like I'm finally learning my eye shape, <laughs> she says, as she probably is going to end up making something really ugly on my eyes right now. But I finally figured out that like, I need to pull eyeshadow out like much higher, my eyes being so deep set, that I, I've been highlighting like too much of my brow bone. Does that make sense? And it makes my eyes look smaller and closer together. Hmm, this is really frustrating. Okay, this is the side with the primer, this is the side without. I don't necessarily feel like it's like super like grabbing hard on the primer and making my life more difficult. I just feel like these are sort of dusty, which is unusual because I typically really like their powder formulas. Maybe I'm just choosing the wrong shades here. That's okay, we're gonna use a lot of them. Okay. Huh. Also, um, the cool thing about these Wayne Goss brushes is actually that they discourage you washing them very often. Since they're synthetic and they're like, I don't know, they're Japanese made or whatever, they have this great kind of like shedding <laughs> of the product and so you just wipe them off on a towel and you can move on. They don't hold on to a whole lot of product. Um, I think that the next safest move would be here, this, this one. This is what happens to me every time I try to use this palette, I get lost. Like, do I need to, let's mix those two together, like they said, let's mix the, the kind of warm apricot color here with that original kind of gray tone. See if we can get, like, we're not past the transition shade at this point. I haven't found a logical transition shade. Like I could just pull my bronzer out and be fine, but like there's nothing that like logically does that in this palette. I, I'm like frustrated. I'm frustrated because this went on so gray. Like I found that to be really unflattering. I'm gonna go in with a little bit smaller of a brush and I'm gonna, uh, do you guys see? That's the problem I'm having is that there's nothing matte for me to kind of like build a shadow with. So we're gonna just ignore the textures and I'm gonna go with this kind of deep brown here and I'm gonna kind of, what is happening? Build my crease here. Guys, what is happening? <laughs> Truth be told, yes, I have had experience with this palette, but I don't think I've ever actually gotten a look out of it that I like love. I've just gotten to know her very intimately, but I still feel like she's sort of a standoffish friend. You know, I'm like, we see each other out all the time. I feel like, you know, we should know each other by now. And she's like, I'm just not ready to let you in. That's how I feel about this eyeshadow palette. Whereas like the Aether Beauty palette is like a gal pal for life. She's just like, hey, how can I help you? How can I make your day easier? This is, <sighs> inaccessible. She's closed off. She's got some baggage. <laughs> okay. Um, mm, uh, what is, that's okay. So this copper shade is extremely beautiful. I think that that's kind of the next way to go. And this is on the primer. Okay. Like, we're one for five at this point on trying different shades, but uh, but yeah, that copper shade is what... 
I, I think it's good. But like here I am talking about how I finally figure out my eye shape and I have like never been so far outside of my comfort zone with an eyeshadow palette before. It's not because the colors are challenging, it's because you are out of options. You are instantly out of options. Okay, going in with that light apricot -y shade on my lids to kind of do something. To do something. They do, uh, you know, say that you can also try to do this with your fingers, which is like an RMS thing. You know, everything is, is very like fingers oriented. So let's give that a shot. Stiff, stiff formula, dusty. Definitely when I was making the swatches, it sort of picked up in clumps. I don't think it really lends itself to like that creamy swatch texture. Picking it up on a brush is difficult. Ooh, you can see though that like the primer works a lot better than the no primer. Like I said, this doesn't have anything. I mean, we'll look at the ingredients, but it doesn't feel like it has anything particularly like emollient in it that's making it want to stick to my lids and not my fingers or smooth out really nicely. All right, I'm gonna take kind of a flat brush here. I'm gonna go into the highlighter. They do suggest obviously like incorporating this on your eyes and stuff. I'm gonna highlight my brow bone. I full on hate this. I, I truly, I like, I hate this look so, so much. Can someone please help me? Can I dial a lifeline? I'm gonna mix the blush with the like apricot -y shade. What? Okay, here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to, wipe this gray off because the plan was never that she was supposed to be gray in the first place. It won't come off so bad. I'm going to dab a little bit of primer on both sides because I think we've discovered which way we would probably want to go with this anyway. And we're going to kind of start over on top. See if we can like avoid that gray tone, stay in the warm tones and see what we can get. Okay, okay. This is what we call damage control because this look is a disaster and we're just trying to save her right now. She's on life support. I'm probably going to speed through this a little bit. because they're all shimmery. Every last blasted one of them is shimmery. And I mean, I'm 32. Shimmers really, really call out any kind of texture and consistencies on the skin. Oh, that silvery highlight doesn't help either. I look like divine. What's going on, RMS? Oh my gosh. If this is your first video of mine that you're watching, I promise I mostly know what I'm doing with eyeshadow. <laughs> this is making me look like an idiot. This is making me look like I have no idea what I'm doing and there's no way out. some eyeliner and some mascara and I'll be right back with you to begin the next part of the video and I am back I feel like I managed to pull it together further proof that almost anything can be saved with eyeliner and mascara I also had to put more concealer underneath my eyes which made everything really mucky 
It might look okay from where you are. I'm not sure. I have been filming in like 4K lately. So you might be able to see the layers of weird, like muddy texture right here where I had to put liquid back on top of powder and then powder back on top of, top of liquid just to clean up the fallout from this. Because like I said, it doesn't feel like it has anything creamy in it. And I will say that while a luxury of some products that have a little bit more stabilizers in them and don't boast the purity standards of RMS, I will take dimethicone all day to not have to deal with that. Let's talk about the product herself and how she self-identifies on their website. So the Hidden Desire Palette Luminizing Powder Mirror Palette Swift Shadows. So I'm assuming their Swift Shadows are a, a formula that they always like use for their Swift Shadows kind of thing. I have the one from the Scarlet Peach Collection though, and it's beautiful. Like I feel like maybe it's more shimmery and so it has more creaminess to it. These are somewhere between matte and shimmer. So they don't have enough matte to be able to kind of build believable shadow without kind of accentuating crepiness, but they don't have enough glittery satisfaction to any of them to give you like a really nice pop on the lid or a nice like, I don't know, brow bone highlight or something like that. I mean, the, the actual highlighter in the palette is so silvery that I feel like it's not gonna work for most people. I actually ended up having to go to a crutch in order to make this like fit into the tone values. I went over it with my Stella Brilliant Eye Brightener from Thrive in order to kind of pull warm champagne light out of this eye look so that it wasn't just, it didn't look like it lived on my face. You know, it looks kind of like it's from another world when you have that like silvery color on warm skin. So I am wearing way more makeup than I want to be right now. I just want to say that like it's uncomfortable and it's mainly because the eyeshadows had so, so much fallout that I ended up having to kind of overcompensate. So $42, it says what it is, six new swift shadows in both luminous and satin finishes that can be mixed and matched to create an array of endless shades in addition to featuring a universally flattering pressed blush and an exclusive luminizing powder. I'm going to save my final thoughts for the end if you can't sniff them out at this point, but I will say like, I love their Living Luminizer. I love the shade of it at least. It's really beautiful, has a beautiful texture. I don't necessarily think it plays super well on like crow's feet, for example. It definitely like separates and goes into creases and stuff, but the shade of it is really, really pretty and much more universally flattering than this. The benefits, we press our powders without heat exposure, such as baking to preserve the integrity of our ingredients and their beneficial properties. This is RMS's thing. They don't overheat their products the way that they say that other brands do, which ostensibly has the effect of preserving the potency and the promises of their buzz ingredients. Whereas a lot of products ostensibly have claims about these buzz ingredients that they've essentially like cooked the efficacy out of the product by overheating it anyway. That's the idea. A breakthrough formula delivers the ease of powder with the texture of a smooth cream. So it blends and builds like a dream without ever looking dry or cakey. Using our unique press technology means that your skin is nourished with our highest quality living ingredients so that you can get that gorgeous glow without ever sacrificing the health of your skin. So I am wrong <laughs> in my assumption that they don't have emollient ingredients in here. So they list mica and silica as the first ingredient in all of these shades. We have jojoba oil, capric triglyceride, rosemary leaf extract, uh, vegetable squalane, like all things that you would think would make this a really creamy formula. I see where they were going with it. I'm not sure that they really got there. Their stuff is certified organic, wild crafted in a lot of cases. The cleanliness of these ingredients is not in question. I feel like they went clean by omission. And with that, I would like to move into my final thoughts on this palette. So I don't feel like there is a customer for this palette. I feel like they tried to go too many ways to please too many people when they could have put out a cool toned palette and a warm toned palette and probably pleased everyone. But this is just trying to smash too many ideas into one item and really not pleasing anyone. You could say that this is supposed to be a companion palette, but I really don't think that it is. It has a blush and a highlighter and six eyeshadows in it. There is no reason a concept like this that's meant for your whole face is meant to be carried around with like another palette, a supplemental palette that is meant to provide your neutrals and your mattes. Do you know that 
is my first thought. Second thought is, I don't know what happened with these formulas. I like their powder formulas. In fact, I talked about it a lot in the past. I love their bronzer, their luminizer powder. I have loved the Swift shadows that I've gotten as individuals. I really, really like their little individual pans of blush. This just feels different to me. It feels cheaper. I don't know why. There's no talc in these, nothing like that. Maybe it's the silica. There's just something that feels really stiff and a little bit chalky about them. If it comes down to it, I know you guys want an honest review from me. I would feel really, really bad telling you guys to spend $42 on this palette. Please don't buy this palette. I'm sorry, RMS. I know I'm not on their PR list. They've never sent me anything. They've never even reached out to me. And I can pretty much guarantee they're never going to now, especially after talking about their foundation. If I can leave you on a lighter note, I have been having so much fun with this particular palette lately. This is the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz Crystal Gemstone palette. And this is the one we're talking about today. This one's got some blues in it. It's got some grays in it, but I feel like it's put together so intuitively. You just, you have backup. I mean, yes, there are a lot more shades in this palette, but there are also a lot of shades in here that I don't use on an everyday basis. But like those two shades right there, that's every eyeshadow look to me. I need a place to start from. And I think I'm not alone in that, you know? I want a really, really nice transition shade and I want a matte crease builder. And then you can go from there. There's really like no explanation for this to be all shimmery. Why? So that is where I leave you guys today on the RMS Hidden Desire palette. It's not often that I do just a wholly negative review, but we have a lot of kind of like all in one mini palettes that have been coming out lately and I get to just cross one off your list, hopefully. So if you did enjoy this, if you found it helpful and or enjoyable, throw it a like. I would really appreciate that, guys. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel for very honest reviews from my heart, uh, go ahead and hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for joining me today, hanging out with me and watching. I love you so much, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.